Hello Rovers fans, it's Ryan Hildred from Rovers Chat here. I'm here after a mad, mad transfer deadline day for Rovers where we made four signings. Can't say uh, that's ever happened to us before. Well, certainly not in recent years. So this is the first of four transfer specials. So um, my weekend is is out of the water chatting to uh, four different fans <laughs> over this weekend. So we're going to start with German midfielder Tom Tribal, who uh, Rovers have signed on loan from Norwich City for the rest of the season. And I'm delighted to be joined by Connor Southwell, um, who is a reporter for the Eastern Daily Press and Norwich Evening News, amongst other things. Connor, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. My, my deadline there was a lot quieter than yours. So um, it was only <laughs> tribal going out online. So I was quite relieved that um, we could, uh, could actually get a bit of work done yesterday as opposed to sort of being on the madness of the of deadline day. So um, I'm not sure how it felt for you guys. Norwich don't really do transfer deadline day. So I can only imagine the sort of frenzy that you guys are in at the moment. That's it. Well, Rovers Chat did a bit of a, a live blog and then I know Jacob and, and Rich from the local press, they were busy as well. So yeah, busy day all round for everyone associated with Rovers. So, yeah, um, so Connor, let's look at um, Tom Tribal then. Um, you know, he's one of those players that I was aware of in that contingent that Daniel Farker brought in. You know, there was Buendia and Steeperman and, and maybe those two stood out a little bit more. I can't say I know too much about Tom Tribal. So could you just start by giving us a summary of him? You know, what sort of midfielder is he? Yeah, well, he's he's a, a difficult midfielder to define, if I'm honest. He's he's quite neat and tidy, but he can also do the um the combative elements as well. I think his is I'm sure we'll get into this, but his problem at Norwich was probably that he wasn't defined enough to displace someone else who was really defining the team. So for example, he wasn't combative enough to displace Alex Tetty. And he wasn't technical enough to displace Moritz Leitner or uh, Mario Vrancic. And he wasn't mobile enough to displace Kenny McLean. He's kind of in the middle. He, kind of, he can do a bit of it all. And um, that's not a slight on him at all, because I think he he does offer a very good skill set for this level. Um, but I, I just think he's he, he's neat and tidy on the ball. He can do the stuff off the ball. He's not particularly defined or strong in, in one particular area. And that's just kind of the midfielder he is. And um, I think the best we saw of him, particularly was, was in that title winning season, I have to say. And um, I, I think Rovers are, are getting a, a, a very good championship midfielder. And again, that's no slight on him. I think it's, he, he will offer, um, he will offer Blackburn a, a, an alternative option um, in, in the middle of the park, someone who can sort of do it all and, and tie things. And he maintains tempo really well. So if he gets the ball to feet, then he, he can, he doesn't necessarily dictate it, but as I said, he maintains it and, and he is quite, um, progressive with some of his passes as well. He's never going to get loads of assists or, or goals, but um, neat and tidy can can win the ball back and um, and, and will do a, a decent job. We'll, we'll probably be a, a six, seven out of ten without being spectacular every week. Is, is probably how I'd sum him up. Yeah, you've actually touched on one of the questions I was going to ask later, but I might as well ask it now. Um, you know, I was looking at his appearances and he played thirty-one times. I think it was in that Norwich promotion season that that you referenced there. And I think it was even less in the Premier League and the season before your promotion. So, you know, you've touched on Tetty and Kenny McLean there. You know, what were the reasons for those games missed? Was it just better options in front of him or has he had some injuries as well? Yeah, he's he's had a, he's had a few injuries actually, um, but that is that's kind of Norwich's model. They sign players who have kind of lost their way a little bit, and and often that means that they get injured quite a lot, and and that's kind of the way Norwich do things, and they and they take a risk on on those players. I mean, when he arrived at Norwich, he was sort of staring into the football abyss. Really, he'd been released by Den Haag in Holland, and no one really picked up the phone to give him a chance. And it was only Daniel Farker who remembered him from his youth days at Werder Bremen and and uh, Hansa Rostock and in Germany and. Um, he, he found himself um, on trial at Norwich and, and it obviously did enough to impress. And um, yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think a lot of it is is Alex Tatty, if I'm being completely honest. And, and that's he, he's certainly not the first person to try to be brought in to maybe be the long term successor of him. And then Tetty raises his level and proves his yeah. importance yeah. again. Um, so it's kind of probably more a, a positive on Alex Tetty that is a negative on Tom Tribal. I mean, Yusuf Malumbu is another player that comes on off the top of my head who obviously had so many games in the Premier League, couldn't get in ahead of Alex Tetty. And um, there, there'll be there'll be more as well, I'm sure. Um, so it's it's um, it's it's been a difficult year, I'd say, for him. He's, he's not played a lot. He's had a few injuries, and then he played after the restart in the Premier League. And um, I think that's where Daniel Farker really sort of lost a little bit of trust with him. If I'm being honest, there was a particular game against Southampton where he didn't perform particularly well. But over his Norwich City career, I think considering where they got him from, and obviously they signed him on a free, I think he's he's been a very decent player, um, if, if I'm honest, and someone that Norwich fans think really fondly of. Yeah. 
And you've just touched on it there with what you've said there, Connor. You know, I was looking at his career. You know, he's represented Germany at youth levels up to under 20, just a handful of appearances up to the under 20s. And then, yeah, unsurprisingly, a bit of time in Bundesliga 1 and 2 before that Den Haag move that you've said there. Um, I think you've answered this question already, um, but did he come with any kind of reputation or did he just sneak in through the back door, really, just someone you'd taken on trial? Yeah, he did. He was. Um, it, it, I think Norwich fans were, were probably in a bit of shock when he arrived on trial. It, who, who's this guy? <laughs> and, uh, and it was. It was kind of in the summer where they were signing a lot of German-based players, so uh, they didn't know a lot of the players that were coming in anyway. But him, him in particular, because he was a German that had been playing in Holland and had been released, and no one really wanted him. And, and Norwich kind of picked him up and, and tried to sort of um, dust all, all the all the stuff they didn't want off and, and tried to sort of find a player in there. And, and they did do that, particularly in, in the first and, and, and second season that he was at the club. I think uh, most Norwich fans would say that he was he was um, he was very good. And it, and particularly there, there was a, a moment in the first season where Norwich needed to sort of solidify themselves a little bit. And, and it was him and Alex Setti that played together as a pair and they really helped shore Norwich City's defence up. And um, they actually went on to sort of keep a, a club record of clean sheets, which is which is something they could probably do with now, yeah. I think, defensively. So, But he, he, he is, like I say, he's probably been the victim of the change of the squad that they're trying to implement this summer and also probably not being defined enough to displace either of those players that they have in those roles that are probably better at elements of the game than him, not necessarily better rounded players because he's probably a better rounded midfielder than Mario Vrancic, for example. But if you have Mario Vrancic next to Alex Tetti, Oli Skip, whoever it is, who's, who's a bit more defensive, then you probably get a bit more out of Vrancic from an offensive sense than you do out of Tom Tribal. So I think yeah. he's, he's kind of been caught in the middle somewhere. And, and that's kind of where he finds himself at Norwich, where he can't quite get into the team, um, but not, but not because of his quality, just because he isn't necessarily um, or not necessarily the best at one certain thing, I, I would say. Yeah. And, you know, offensive wise, like you said there, I looked at his career, seven goals in 200 odd career appearances and just the three for Norwich. So can we take it from that, that he is a midfielder that sits more than he gets forward? Yeah, I think so. He's, he's a bit he's a bit like a metronome. That's kind of the way I, I kind of do it. He's neat and tidy. He'll keep things flowing, but he'll never he'll never play the pass, the Hollywood pass that sets up a goal. Um, he, he just is probably the pass that kickstarts an offensive move, so to speak. So um, in, in that regard, he's very effective at what he does, but he's, he's certainly not a midfielder who's who's going to chip in with seven, eight goals a season. I think, um, who knows, he could go on and, and, and have a really good have a really good season for his career. But yeah, we, we've never seen him to be a, a particularly good goal-scoring midfielder. It's always been fairly solid, keep things tight and, and try and give it to players who are a bit better from an offensive sense, give it to the creators that Norwich have. And that is kind of the role of, of their midfield too, to be fair. So if he's given a bit more licence at Blackburn, then, then it would be interesting to see what he can do from an offensive sense. Mm. But um, he, he will support play. Um, he, he will support the offensive phases of play. He will support the defensive stage um, stages of play. But he won't necessarily be the player who, who will pick out the top corner from 25 yards, for example. That's just not the sort of player he is um, yeah. compared to, say, Bradley Johnson, when we saw him at Norwich, for example, who, who just seemed to break the net every time he, he got the ball outside the, of the box. So um, very, very different, just neat, tidy, solid, um, and, and will keep things ticking. So in, in that regard, he, he will be a very good asset, I think, if if you guys get the ball down and look to play. Yeah. And despite all of that, you know, are there any particular games or moments, you know, good or bad, that stand out for Tribal in a Norwich shirt? Yeah, well, I, th I think if you, if you ask Norwich fans what Tom Tribal's best game was, um, there was a, a game in the title winning season. You might remember it well. Norwich went to Ellen Road and, and won three one, and he was a colossus that day. I mean, he he in terms of his ball recoveries and, and the, the amount of tackles and the amount of work he went through, it was tremendous. And Norwich actually had um, an eight game spell in that season where they were unbeaten, and he played alongside Kenny McLean and was really pivotal in that. Really, really good. And and that's probably the period that we saw the best out of him. But again, injuries. Um, Alex Tetty's form, uh, all these things have contributed to him probably not getting the game time that he would like. Um, and, and yeah, in terms of, of, of negative, probably in the Premier League, I think he he probably lacked the mobility um, to, to be a Premier League midfielder. But again, if he is in a wider sort of support network in midfield where he's got a runner maybe behind him, then um, I, I don't see any reason why he couldn't 
maybe do a job. But as, as that sole sitting midfielder in the Premier League, he certainly didn't have the mobility, um, maybe even the physicality to do that job um, in the same way as, as, as Alex Tetty. Yeah. I think I saw some of those YouTube clips, actually, of that Leeds game when we signed him, some of the, the tackles yeah. he was putting in. So uh, that's not surprising. Um, so, Connor, Rovers have lost Lewis Travis to injury until the new year, and um, he's the real heartbeat of our midfield. And we've also got this really odd situation with Corey Evans, where he plays 90 minutes for Northern Ireland and seemingly not fit to play for us. So don't know what's going on there. So at the moment, we're quite reliant on the physicality of Bradley Johnson, who obviously got player of the month last season, uh, last month. So he's done really well. Is that something you think Tribal is going to help cover? You know, Corey Evans and Travis being out, is he going to slot in there and help that? And, and do you think you can see a partnership forming with Johnson, particularly in these next few weeks as we're a bit light in that central midfield area? Yeah, definitely. I think with with someone more physical, like like I said, we saw him alongside um, Alex Tetty in in well in in the first season under Daniel Farker and also in the title winning season at times, and they did really shore up that midfield and and they made them really really solid, which. Um, if, if you've seen Norwich in the last two years, you can say is a fairly rare occurrence. So um, in, in that regard, I think he, he will be effective, particularly if you've got um, really dynamic, creative players um, sort of ahead of him. That, then I think he will help solidify that midfield and make it probably functional. Um, but it's, it's a really nice sort of throwback for Norwich because obviously you've got Bradley Johnson, who, who's mm. key in that playoff final win a few years ago and then Tom Tribal so kind of a blend of, of two <laughs> Norwich City eras um, so to speak Elliot Bennett of course at the club so um, I, I think that's a, a, a very decent championship midfield too actually and and, and Tribal um, as I said is, is probably a, a, a top end championship player um, probably not quite good enough for the for the Premier League on the evidence of last season, but then he was in a very, very poor Norwich City side. So it's always hard to sort of judge individual players, I think. But yeah. um, I think I think he will help solidify the midfield. I think he will help, as I said, maintain the tempo. Um, and, and ultimately, I, I think you will you'll you'll get a lot of decent performances out of him, solid performances, um, without necessarily being spectacular. You might get the odd leads away where he's a, an eight and a nine out of ten. Um, but he's he's a he's he's a he's a really classy footballer and one that I think Blackburn fans will will grow to in the same way that, that Norwich fans did um, because he he supports play really well and um, and he, and he does a lot of things well as well. So there's a lot of negatives to his game, but at this level, there's there's um, probably more positives than negatives. I would say. Indeed. And finally, Connor, um, Rovers have made it quite public uh, about the constraints on our budget. And Mowbray has stated he's trying to resist loan signings if he can, because he's trying to build a, a foundation at the club. But what we've got with a player here like Barry Douglas is someone that's tasted promotion before, knows what it's like at the top end of this division. So do you ultimately rate this as a good loan signing for Rovers? Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's, it's a really smart loan. So I think it's, it's probably a bit... Um, a bit odd from Norwich's sense in terms of they've they've got a player there who was so effective in the, in that championship title winning season. I know fans are looking at it a bit like, well, they've just let one of their their players go out yeah. to so a, a team that could be a championship promotion rival. Um, so I, I think from from that sense with Norwich, I think there are people who are a bit confused by it, and he is so popular. So his his departure was always going to um, was always going to generate a response. I think Norwich fans would have preferred him to to obviously go abroad, but um, yeah, it's it's not ideal for Norwich's sense, but in terms of Blackburn, I think, uh, I mean, you you mapped out at the at the start of the show four really good additions. Actually, I don't think you've sort of overexerted yourselves in in the market mm -hmm. as you as you can see on deadline day. You've not signed Harry Wilson, for example, <laughs> when you're losing three and a half million every month. So um, that's that's the way to do it at this stage in the current climate. It is going to be very reliant on players on loan, players you can get on freeze, and I think it, you you ultimately have strengthened your squad by, by signing Tom Tribal is, is the way I look at it. And alongside Bradley Johnson, you've got, a, a, as I said, a, as you said, a, a championship midfield with, with two players that know the division very well and, and have promotion on their CV. And that experience is, is invaluable, really. So Norwich fans are going to be watching with interest to see how he does. And of yeah. course, they, they have that break clause in January. And, and Daniel Farker essentially said that if uh, 
if they felt that he was threatening them a little bit, then maybe they'd look to, to recall him. So I, I guess that's that's probably not great from his sense, but look, he, he can only perform. And um, who knows, maybe you guys will be in a position next summer where um, he's, he's had a, a storming season with you guys and you decide to, to sign him permanently. I think that's that's probably the ideal situation for all parties, really, because he's um, he's out of favour at Norwich. So, um, But I know Norwich fans will, will wish him well um, because, as I said, he's, he's very popular, I think, inside the club as well as amongst the fans as well. So... Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on back in the championship and whether you guys get the same hungry, fired up Tom Tribal that Norwich City got in the, in the first two years. And if you get that, then then you've got a very good um, midfielder at this level on your hands. Brilliant. Well, Connor, that sounds um, really reassuring to me. As I say, didn't know too much about him, but everything you've said in terms of how he plays and, and that work rate that you were just describing there, he sounds absolutely a Tony Mowbray player, just someone who Mowbray knows he's going to be able to rely on and and get a good performance out of. And I hadn't quite picked up actually on that break clause. So hopefully Lewis Travis is back by the time that that break clause is activated indeed, if um, if Daniel Farker wants to do that. And yeah, I think overall, Moby's been really smart yesterday. Those four signings, just adding some depth. You know, I was looking at it about four weeks ago before we'd signed Daniel Ayala, for example. And you're thinking, oh, this squad is a bit light, but now it feels mm. like we've got options and, Tom Tribal is an option in a central midfield area where we've got Johnson, Travis to come back, hopefully Corey Evans, you know, got some good options in that midfield area. So really positive. Um, so Rovers fans, what do you think? You've heard it from Connor here. You know, he knows Tom Tribal really well. As I say, I didn't know too much about him. I'm feeling really quite optimistic about this signing and probably he's going to go into the squad for the game against Nottingham Forest. Um Let's see if, if that comes true. If you're watching this video after the game, let's see if uh, he did start. Um, let us know your thoughts. Hit us with some comments on the video. Of course, please like the video, subscribe to the Rovers Chat channel. This is the first of four videos that you're going to get. So uh, I think I'm on to Barry Douglas next uh, at some point. So look out for that. Um, Connor, thanks ever so much for joining us. I know it's match day for you today. Really appreciate your time and, and joining us. And you've given us some really good insight there. So thanks, Connor. No, thanks, mate. All the best for the season. No worries. Thanks all. And thanks, Rovers fans. See you soon.